everybody. I wanted to do a quick walkthrough on how to set up your own web application penetration testing lab. The steps are actually pretty simple, very short, but let me go ahead and walk you through it step by step so you can have a good way of actually setting it up yourself. So the first thing you're going to need to do is set up VirtualBox and then we're going to download Kali. So VirtualBox is the virtual machine, the actual engine that runs all of the virtual machines. So you can get VirtualBox by going to virtualbox.org, clicking on the downloads, and in this case, there's a Windows version, which is what I would use. All right, so I would just download that. I already have it installed, so let's move on to the next step, which is to install Kali. So we can download Kali just by going to kali.org, and there's a download page. Uh, the recommendation is to go to Virtual Machines since we have VirtualBox installed. There is a VirtualBox download. We just click that and we start our download. All right, so I already mentioned that I have Oracle VirtualBox already installed. Uh, I have a number of different types of vulnerable servers, uh, virtual machines already installed, but let me walk you through a fresh install. So we just have to go to add and then we go to our download. Now I've already extracted that, so you're going to need to do that as well. I'm trying to keep this short because I already have a video if you want to watch it on how to set up your own lab. Uh, definitely check out that video. So that's kind of again why I'm streaming through this as quickly as possible. So I'm selecting the Kali VirtualBox image. I'll open it and it's basically ready to go. So I'll just hit start and then I'll let it boot up. All right, so we have Kali booted up. Uh, it's obviously small, I'm gonna uh, maximize it. Let me go ahead and log in, just using Kali for the username and Kali for the password. All right, I'll maximize it just to make things easier. And then what I wanna do is I need to update and upgrade the Kali system. So let me go ahead and do that next. All right, as I mentioned, the first thing I want to do is update the system. So I'll do sudo apt update, and then I'll let it run. Basically, it's going to get a list of all the information that it needs in order to update the system. All right, so now that it's been updated, you can see that there's 944 packages that can be upgraded. Let me go ahead and upgrade that. So up, upgrade, so sudo apt upgrade I'll hit enter and then continue and I just need to give it some time it's going to take a bit so when it's done I'll bring it back and then we can move on to the next step okay so we can see that the upgrade has completed and we have a Kali system that is ready for our next step but let me stop for a second I went through this pretty quickly and I really didn't discuss why I chose Kali specifically. So let, let's have that conversation. So I know we've gone through this pretty quickly. So let me explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. So first of all, I wanted to have a virtual machine that I could keep in a lab, like on a virtual engine, to isolate and have a secure lab. Now the secure lab is a hacking lab. So the next thing we need to do is have a virtual target that we can go up against that we can attack safely in our lab. Again, since we're using VirtualBox, that keeps things safe. We're using Kali. Now we have an attack platform. And our next thing is to discuss a vulnerable target. And in this case, we're going to use WebGoat. So let's talk about WebGoat. So WebGoat is a platform, a virtual machine that allows us to perform web application attacks, specifically those that are targeting the OWASP top 10. All right, we can get the WebGoat by going to GitHub. All I did was search for WebGoat, and we can see that in the second option, we've got WebGoat is a deliberately insecure application. We'll click on that. So once I'm on the WebGoat GitHub project, I'll go over to the releases. I'll click the latest, which is in this case, version 2025.3 then I will download the jar file. All right, so this next step I wanna walk you through because you're gonna get an error if you followed along so far. And I want you to be familiar what the error looks like in case you get the same error. 
So in this case, we've got in our downloads file, we have a webgoat-2025.3.char. All right, so all we need to do to launch webgoat is run the following command. So that command is java and then dash jar and then the actual jar file. So let me go ahead and hit enter and you'll see the error that comes up. All right, so what this is telling us is that even though we did an update and an upgrade on Kali, the version of Java isn't as high as it needs to be. So we're going to need to update Java specifically in order to be able to run this. So the first thing I wanna do is see what's the latest version of Java. So I did a query on Google and for latest version of Java, and we can see that it's Java 24, all right? So now that I know what number it is, I can run a command to upgrade our system to that version of Java. All right, so this is the command to upgrade our version of Java on the Kali system. And in this case, we're gonna upgrade it to version 24. So I'll just hit enter and then I will continue and then I'll come back to you guys when this is done. Okay, it doesn't really take a whole lot of time to update the system to the latest version of Java. Uh, so let me clear this off and then we'll run that same command again to run webgoat and see what happens. Okay, we can see that it's launching correctly. I'll give it a minute and then I'll show you the next steps. All right, so now that webgoat has launched in the command window, let me go ahead and bring up a browser and navigate to the actual URL in order to be able to use webgoat. So I'll post it on the screen, but in order to get to the webgoat, all we need to do is go to our local host on port 8080, and then the directory is webgoat. Once we get there, we need to register ourselves as a new user. So once I've selected a username and password, I just need to agree to the terms, sign up, and then it creates an account locally. Once I created my username and password and accepted the terms, it takes me to this page, which you can see that there's A1 through A10, which emulates the OWASP top 10. Now, before I go any further, I want to show you that you can do all the things you need to do in order to perform an attack against the WebGoat. But what you're also going to want to do is bring up Burp Suite. So let me show you how to do that next. So if we go up to the Applications tab, and then we move down to Web Application Analysis, there's Burp Suite. So let me go ahead and launch that. So you can just click through all of the default buttons that come up. Accept the terms. Just keep clicking next and then start burp. What I always suggest is to actually use the browser that comes inside the burp suite. So you'll go to proxy and then you'll click open browser. Now I'll give it a minute to launch and then we'll take it from there. So once the burp suite browser comes up, we just use the exact same URL, which is the local host on port 8080 and then the directory is webgoat. Again, I'll put that right on the screen so that you can get straight to it. And then once you're there, we've already created the username and password. I'll just put that in there and then I'll sign in and then we're ready to go. As you can see, again, we have A1 through A10. And again, these mimic the OWASP top 10. So now that you have a virtual system that has webgoat installed, you can perform all your attacks in this safe environment. You don't have to actually set up any additional servers or systems uh, to create this virtual lab. It's all contained and it's all safe and it's all ready to go. If you're curious how to actually perform these attacks, I have a lot of videos out there that specifically walk you through on how to perform attacks against the OWASP top 10. I'll put a link in the bottom. Otherwise, I think that's gonna be good enough for now. If you have any questions, make sure you join our Discord server. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.